Is Argireline really Botox in a bottle? We're gonna get into it in this video. But before we do, definitely give this one a thumbs up. If you like getting your skincare content from a board certified dermatologist, make sure you're subscribed and you've got the bell notification turned on so you know as soon as my videos go live. And definitely follow me over on TikTok and Instagram. I'm pretty consistent with skincare content on those platforms as well. What the heck is Argireline? Acetyl hexapeptide 8. It is a synthetic peptide that anti-aging benefits similar to getting Botox injections. In other words, something that you can put on your skin instead of going in for injections and it will have the same effect of smoothing out wrinkles and fine lines. Does this actually do what people are claiming it does? Does it actually work like Botox? Well, in order to answer that, you need to know a little bit about how Botox works. Botox, botulinum toxin, is something that is injected into the skin in order to relax the facial muscles to smooth out wrinkles and fine lines, but specifically it works at a very unique location, the neuromuscular junction. This is a site where nerves talk to muscle fibers to tell them to contract. And there's a little chemical signal called acetylcholine that the nerve transmits to the muscle fiber in order to tell it to contract. Botox works by inhibiting the release of that little acetylcholine chemical. Specifically, Botox works by targeting members of the snare complex. What the heck is the snare complex? It is a group of proteins that work to tether the little a packet of acetylcholine to the nerve membrane so that it can be transmitted across the neuromuscular junction to the muscle fiber to tell it to contract. That is where Botox works. So by blocking the action of the snare complex, Botox basically inhibits the release of that acetylcholine chemical into the neuromuscular junction and downstream from that, it inhibits the contraction of the facial muscle. Herein you have Argireline, a synthetic peptide found in skincare products that you're gonna be applying to your skin. Argireline is a peptide that is patterned after one of the proteins in the snare complex. Theoretically, because it looks like and or is shaped like that particular protein, it might, in theory, inhibit the release of acetylcholine to the neuromuscular junction, inhibiting uh, muscle contraction, similar to how Botox works. This is desirable because a lot of people don't like the idea of having something injected. They would prefer to use a topical skincare product. It's maybe more accessible to you. Does the research actually support that it works though? That is the key question. Preclinical studies, meaning before actually using on real people, uh, show that in cells in a dish, argireline is as potent as Botox at inhibiting release of acetylcholine across the neuromuscular junction. A study done on mouse skin in 2013 actually showed that application of argireline to mice improved their collagen production. And you might posit that that could have a downstream effect of smoothing out wrinkles and fine lines, similar to how tretinoin works. Although, wait a minute, that's not actually how Botox works. But anyways, that is a preclinical study with this compound suggesting perhaps it might be beneficial in having a wrinkle smoothing effect. But to be clear, Botox does not work by improving collagen synthesis. It works by inhibiting muscle contraction that leads to dynamic wrinkles. And dynamic wrinkles are those that appear when you move your face around. Static wrinkles are wrinkles that are present at rest, meaning when you're not moving your face around. In 2002, we get our first clinical study with Argyrolan, an actual human people, uh, 10 otherwise healthy female volunteers uh, using an oil and water emulsion of argireline applied twice a day to the lateral periorbital area of one eye, meaning where the crow's feet appear, versus an oil and water emulsion to the other um, eye with no argireline in it. They did this twice a day for 30 days. And at the end of the study, there was a statistically significant decrease in wrinkle depth um, on the side that was getting the argireline in comparison to the vehicle control. Decreasing wrinkle depth by 30% in comparison to the other eye that got the control. Importantly, there was no irritation or toxicity or any adverse effects. Importantly though, in this study, they're assessing wrinkle depth using silicone implants. Really all that they are assessing here is uh, static wrinkles. 
meaning wrinkles that are present at rest, not dynamic wrinkles. So it doesn't support that this actually works like Botox, but it does show that it did, at least in this small study, improve wrinkle depth, smoothing out wrinkles that are present at rest. Suffice it to say, at least it appeared to be well tolerated, but this is a pretty small study, only 10 participants. Now in 2013, we get a multi-center randomized trial of 60 uh, human participants randomized in a three to one ratio to get either argireline or placebo, meaning just the vehicle, no argireline. And for four weeks, the study participants applied either the argireline or the placebo twice a day, again, to the periorbital area. This study demonstrated the total anti-wrinkle efficacy of the argireline product to be 48%, compared with 0% in the placebo. They also did an objective evaluation of skin roughness, showing a statistically significant decrease in roughness in the argireline group with no decrease in the placebo group. But again, this study is looking at static wrinkles, not dynamic wrinkles and unfortunately it was not blinded. Then in 2017, we get a prospective randomized trial of 24 otherwise healthy women, and this particular study randomized them to get either argireline alone or another peptide, tripeptide 10 citrulline, no peptide, or the combination of argireline plus the uh, tripeptide 10 citrulline. Interestingly, this study showed a reduction in transepidermal water loss with argireline. Basically, this study showed an improvement in skin hydration with either peptide or the combination of peptides. Now, I've got videos on this channel about peptides and skincare in general, and Certain peptides may have some evidence to suggest their benefit in improving wrinkles, but at the end of the day, it does seem as though peptides in skincare, at the very least, are very good humectants, meaning they help with hydration, especially in the stratum corneum, the very top layer of the skin. They help to pull water from the deeper layers of the skin, and ultimately that, by itself, can improve the look of fine lines and wrinkles. So as it stands now, the clinical studies that we have do not support the idea that this peptide works like Botox. Um, we really don't have any proof of how this peptide works in people. We have preclinical studies showing that it might work like Botox. Its shape and structure suggests that it might work like Botox, but we don't actually have definitive evidence that in people it works like Botox. The evidence that we have more so suggests that it can improve the look of wrinkles at rest, which is not how Botox works. Botox helps to prevent the appearance of dynamic wrinkles by relaxing the muscles. So suffice it to say, the research that we have today really implies more, at least to me, that this particular peptide acts at the more surface level of the skin to improve skin hydration. In order for it to address the muscles, it's gotta penetrate uh, across the epidermis, down through the dermis, to, uh, to hit that neuromuscular junction of the facial muscles. Is that even possible? Can it actually penetrate the waxy protective layer of the stratum corneum to then, again, penetrate through the epidermis, the dermis, to reach the neuromuscular junction to actually relax facial muscles as Botox would, which is, again, injected into the skin? Seems unlikely. This peptide is charged and water-loving. Same issues that you run into with your vitamin C, ascorbic acid, you always have this challenge of good skin penetration. Do we have any studies on the penetration of argireline into the skin? In 2015, there was a study looking at argireline penetration in guinea pig skin and in human cadaver skin. They did an oil and water 10% emulsion of argireline. And what this study showed is that most of the argireline in the topical product ended up just being washed off the surface of the skin. Less than 1% actually penetrated the skin, both in the guinea pig and in the human cadaver skin. The majority of it remained in the stratum corneum, which is the top layer of the skin. That's not where the neuromuscular junction is. That's not where facial muscle resides. There was no argireline found in the dermis, the deeper layers of the skin. So the likelihood that this is actually getting down into the skin and localizing at the neuromuscular junction to truly relax facial muscles like Botox seems very unlikely. Although the research that we have to date is very small, it at least suggests that this ingredient in skincare products is safe to use and may improve the look 
of static wrinkles. That's our Giraline. It's a peptide. You can buy it in various skincare products. The Ordinary makes a product with our Giraline. I believe personally that it primarily acts as a humectant. I don't think that it truly acts as a Botox-like compound peptide. I don't think it's Botox in a bottle, but I do think that you can get improvement in skin hydration and the end result is going to be an improvement in the look of fine lines and wrinkles as would occur with other peptides or other humectants. That's nothing to scoff at. It certainly can be beneficial, but is this the holy grail anti-aging ingredient? Is this a replacement for Botox? No, it's not. Let me know in the comments if you use this peptide in your skincare routine. Have you seen any results with it? Is it something you tried in the past and were underwhelmed by and bailed on? Let us know, but I hope you guys enjoyed this video. On the end slate, I'm going to put a, a recent video talking about, I don't know what, I'll just put one of my <laughs> recent videos for you to check out next. If you like this one though, give it a thumbs up, share it with your friends, and as always, don't forget, sunscreen and subscribe. I'll talk to you guys tomorrow. Bye.